At the beginning of One Piece, Luffy said that he wanted at least 10 crewmates. And ever since Jinbei's invite 400 chapters ago, we've been waiting and waiting on this mythical 10th member, and gone through countless possibilities. Rebecca, Bartolomeo, Carrot, Kinemon, Momonosuke, Yamato, it's been a never-ending cycle of readers getting excited and building up expectations for each of these candidates only to be met with disappointment again and again, as over and over they turned out to be red herrings. And I think I can safely say that when Yamato decided not to join, that was the final nail in the coffin for a lot of readers' enthusiasm about the prospect of a new crew member. We've just been down this lane too many times and been burnt too many times, which is why ironically, in this sort of hangover state we're in, where all this new crewmate euphoria has died down and feels like lots of readers no longer even care, at this moment in the aftermath of it all when expectations are at their lowest is when the single best straw hat candidate we've had in the entire new world so far has emerged. In my opinion, Jewelry Bonnie has quietly become the first Straw Hat candidate in the last 400 chapters that actually seems like she could genuinely be being written as a main character and potentially permanent addition to the crew, beyond the superficial reasons that many had touted for the last dozen or so wannabe Straw Hats. I'm going to be breaking down why Bonnie is different from everyone we've had so far, focusing on her character conflict, the significance of her past, and the direction that seems to be pointing her towards for the future as well as several other aspects of how she's been written so far that all seem to be painting a picture of the 10th Straw Hat crew member. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this every week. And real quick, before we get any further, I have some good news. I have a brand new poster for you all, one that captures the beauty of the entirety of One Piece in a single image by artist Jesse Martin. Just look at this imaginative concept. Every single arc and island we've ever visited all depicted in this visually stunning galactic vision of the One Piece verse. This is the type of poster you can point to on your wall to show someone what makes One Piece such a rich and fantastical narrative. The entire dreamlike story is right here. And as usual, we have it on premium paper stock with high-end texture and a silky satin finish. You can get it for yourself in the Morge store today, just hit the link in the description below. Now to begin with, let's quickly go through the simpler points that seem to be setting up Bonnie as a potential straw hat. First and foremost, Bonnie is getting a lot of focus. Her character storyline is arguably the single most important in all of Egghead. Even if she's not carrying the arc in terms of plot, she is clearly shaping up to be the emotional centerpiece of this arc. Whereas the Straw Hats themselves are kind of just tourists here, and Vegapunk is here mainly for exposition and to catch a ride with the Straw Hats, Bonnie has been the one actual dramatic character storyline that has been running through Egghead that now seems like it is about to become extremely important. So far, we have been focusing on her drive for accountability and answers, her determination to save her father, on her past and what she has lost, and we're looking at, potentially, her growth as a character once she understands whatever she is supposed to understand at the end of all this. And what really stands out to me is how central the focus on her has been. As compared to many other past Straw Hat candidates, it was like, yes, many of them had a good bit of screen time and had some okay character focus here or there, but often they were also swamped in a sea of other character storylines, be that Rebecca in Dressrosa, Yamato in Wano, Carrot in Whole Cake Island, whoever, I never felt as though their dramatic storylines defined any given arc. However, Bonnie's level of focus here in a very tight, very concentrated arc does seem somewhat closer to a chopper in Drum Kingdom or a Sanjay in Baratier, etc., than what we've seen from past candidates in the New World. And what's important is that this may not even be the most important arc for Bonnie. This could very well just be a setup arc, though we will get to that discussion in a minute. Because right now, on top of all this, because the Egghead Island arc is so tightly written, we have gotten to get extensive focus on Bonnie's interactions with the Straw Hats as well, and particularly with Luffy, which is of course crucial for any crewmate. And it's been the full range. While we've certainly gotten to see lots of fun interactions and how easily Bonnie could fit in with the crew's dynamics, what's also important is that in a short amount of time, we've already gotten to see some of the more substantive groundwork for potentially significant emotional connections being laid. Though of course we still have a long way to go in this category, which I think is of course entirely possible, because here's the first particularly interesting point to consider. It does seem like all of the protagonists are about to escape from Egghead Island together. Bonnie is presumably about to be on the ship with the Straw Hats, traveling with them for the near future, 
as there is literally nowhere else for her to go. Think about it, why did Oda choose to have us meet her when she was stranded in the middle of the ocean? Oda's established that Bonnie has no ship of her own, and not only that, we should also consider the fact that Oda seems to have gotten rid of Bonnie's crew entirely. Bonnie, a former pirate captain, has been reintroduced to the story as a completely free agent with no companions, no ship of her own, and no place to go. At least for the immediate future, she is primed to join with Luffy and the gang, which sets up the potential for becoming a permanent situation. As a reminder, Nami and Robin were initially also just tagalongs on the crew who didn't actually consider themselves crew members and were just relying on the Straw Hats temporarily, which was of course a setup for them to eventually reach the conclusion of their character arcs where they realized that they do want to stay with the crew permanently. I could easily see that being the case for Bonnie, as Egghead seems like it could be a fairly short arc that may be laying the foundation for her character, but maybe still too early for the full payoff of her character arc. Now this brings us to Bonnie's past. It definitely seems possible that Bonnie's tragic past, or at least part of it, could be about to be revealed this arc. And that is, of course, something most of us readers consider to be a prerequisite for joining the crew. And in particular, Bonnie's past seems like it is set to be one of the most tragic and heartbreaking in the entire story, as Oda has really been playing up the emotion for this particular backstory for a long, long time, throughout the arc, and honestly, even going back to pre-time skip. And since the backstory centers around not just Bonnie, but Kuma as well, I'd go so far as to say this is nearly guaranteed to be one of the most tragic backstories in One Piece, since it has by far the most long-running buildup of all the character backstories in One Piece so far. Again, the tragedy of Kuma and Bonnie is something that has been building for hundreds and hundreds of chapters. That level of significance certainly seems like Straw Hat potential, at least compared to other Straw Hat candidates we've had in the New World. As I would argue that none of the commonly mentioned Straw Hat candidates we've seen in the post time skip so far ever had that much effort put into their backstories. Even Momonosuke, who was the one Straw Hat candidate with by far the most character focus in the New World so far, had barely a few panels devoted to his experiences in the past. And on top of all this is a key piece for Bonnie that people really rarely discuss when it comes to Straw Hats, which is that Bonnie has a clear and prominent character conflict. It doesn't mean much on its own for a character to just have a sad past. The point of us learning about these tragic backstories is generally to help us understand the personal conflict the character is going through right now in the current day, thereby setting up the character to overcome something and to grow as an individual in the process, which in turn transforms them into a straw hat. Bonnie clearly has a lot of pent up hate, anger, resentment, and frustration, and she is aggressively pursuing a path that may in fact be misguided at the moment. It definitely seems like there is an important lesson for her to be learned here, whether in Egghead or in an upcoming arc, something that may change her perspective and her direction in life. Again, that is how most Straw Hats are written, a tragic backstory which resulted in a modern day character conflict that they are dealing with, which leads to them growing in some manner as they have a realization and change in perspective, which finally turns them into a Straw Hat. And two other minor points that help support Bonnie's case that are worth quickly mentioning are that first of all, Bonnie is a very capable combatant. She is, after all, one of the worst generation and was a renowned pirate captain in her own right. It's hard to say how she scales among the Straw Hat crew, but she definitely would not be out of place at all and would be a strong addition. And I also think it's a small point in her favor that she's a woman as right now the Straw Hat crew only has two women. And while there are of course no mandatory quotas, it would seem fitting at this point to balance things out just a little bit. I do think that is part of the reason that Rebecca, Carrot, and Yamato got so much traction in the past, with many even calling for Vivi to return, since the diversity is a small factor. But all those other points aside, the biggest reason that I feel many don't talk about as to why Bonnie may be the perfect candidate to join the Straw Hats at this point in the story is that her dream may be the ideal fit for this point in the story, the conclusion of the Straw Hats adventures. What do I mean by that? Well, after Wano ended and no one joined the crew, one of the main questions many readers had is how would it be possible for a new character to be introduced at this point, literally in the final saga of One Piece, and somehow still feel like an organic addition to the Straw Hats? I mean, isn't it a little late at this point? At best, we could have someone join at Elbaf, but then the very next arc we're at Laugh Tale, right? Well, what's interesting about Bonnie 
is that she seems like she might be a character who, while a late addition, would actually only make sense joining in the final saga itself. Because with most every Straw Hat, the way their story goes is that they have their own personal island-based conflict that they have to deal with and overcome. And from there, they can then join the crew and focus on pursuing their long-term dream, while simultaneously helping Luffy achieve his. For example, Sanji has to deal with the Krieg Pirates at Baratie, and from there, he can then join the Straw Hats and focus on the All Blue, while assisting Luffy as his cook. Chopper has to deal with Wapple at Drum Kingdom, and from there, he can then join the Straw Hats and focus on curing all diseases, while assisting Luffy as his doctor, etc, etc. Basically, the process is solve the conflict of each character's micro storyline so that the character can then be integrated into the long running storyline of One Piece. But with Bonnie, it's a little different. What is Bonnie's main conflict? Her main conflict isn't some micro island storyline. Her conflict seems to be with the world government itself. Bonnie seems to be seeking vengeance and retribution against the celestial dragons themselves. Her tragic backstory is shaping up to be that her own father was turned into a slave and guinea pig of the world nobles, and Bonnie herself was a captive of these same world nobles for some time. And right now, her mission is to make everyone pay for what they did to her and her father. Basically, Bonnie's personal conflict isn't something that can just be resolved at Egghead, as her enemies are the Celestial Dragons and the world government itself. Her story points to her wanting to go after them. In a way, it's similar to what Robin suffered from. Robin's enemy wasn't any individual pirate or villain. It was the world itself. And that set us up beautifully for the Straw Hats declaring war against the world government and engaging in a proxy battle against the world government by fighting their top agents, the CP9. It's just that now we are at the end of the story, the entire story, and the time to actually truly fight the world government in a legitimate war is approaching. As such, similar to Robin, maybe the final straw hat we get wouldn't be one with some isolated conflict like in Elbaf or like in Wano. Maybe the final straw hat for the final saga would naturally be one whose conflict is again with the world government itself, whose story and dream is very directly tied to the conclusion of One Piece, as their narrative would naturally tie into the Straw Hat's final narrative of taking down the world government. I'm not saying it's a recreation of Robin's storyline, where Bonnie gets captured and the Straw Hats go to war for her or anything. I'm just saying that Bonnie's story and conflict may be the perfect organic fit with where the Straw Hats are right now. She's a character whose dream or goal may very well be taking down the Celestial Dragons. She doesn't have some micro island-based conflict of her own because her conflict is in fact one and the same as the actual final conflict of One Piece, seeing the Celestial Dragons defeated. And her story and her tragic past could directly play into some added emotional weight going into this final war against the world government. Essentially, Oda may have saved the straw hat that has the most personal conflict with the Celestial Dragons and whose story arc is actually built around bringing justice to the world government for the very final saga as that is where her arc would be the most relevant and hit the hardest. So do you agree? If Bonnie for Straw Hat actually makes sense, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like and subscribe. And you can get my extended thoughts on this and all future topics by becoming a member. Just hit the button below. And make sure to get your copy of the Journey of One Piece poster. Link in the description below.